to him. I'm very excited, Bill and I. We just built a really good relationship, a really good friendship through writing letters back and forth, and I'm anxious to meet him. After all these years, <laughs> hi, hi Bill. Hi. I've been waiting forever. I didn't think you were ever coming out. I've been here like three hours. Oh, I've been here like 18 years. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling like, like I could fly. <laughs> it feels surreal, uh, just completely overwhelming. Uh, first thing I want to do right now is get as far away from this prison as possible and then just put this in the rearview mirror permanently. On to better things. Yes, free at last. I feel an incredible feeling of optimism and joy that after 18 years, massive chunk of my life gone, I am finally free. I'm just extraordinarily grateful uh, for Mark and Shona that they opened their, their home to me. It's very humbling the trust that they put in me in doing that, and that's more of encouragement for me to do the right thing, and I'm just so grateful for it. I'm starving. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> I can't believe I had, you have gas in the car. I had them. I just had them um, from Sabbath. I needed some protein. I just grabbed that out of the God, cabinet. Are you kidding me? You actually have them in the car. Oh, man. I haven't had one of them in so many years. It was, uh, I won't say better than sex, but it was right up there, <laughs> right up there with it. It was awesome. I could actually open the window. Mm -hmm. Control of the window, that's a, that's no uh, small feat. I was serving time for burglary, grand theft. Violated that by walking off a of work detail. So for nonviolent charges, I served 18 years. 18 years for nonviolent crime is a long time. And in that time, I have lost relationship with my kids. They grew up without me. There's nobody in my family in touch with me right now. I've lost my mother. She was mentally ill. She was told I was dead. I've lost so much, you know, I've lost my wonderful muscle-bound physique, you know, so I'm working on that. But my heart has changed. Because of the loss and pain, I don't want to keep adding to that anymore. What do you think is going to be the hardest thing for you now that you're out and you're free? You don't have money coming in. Are you willing to go out and get a blue-collar job to make money? I guess the, the humble answer is yes, I'll do anything to stay out of prison. The ego-driven answer is probably not. I wouldn't want to. In the past, Bill made lots of money by picking locks and breaking into safes and um, stealing jewelry, stealing artwork. In the past few months, he's talked about, you know, he wants to get a job where he's making $2,000 a week. This is unrealistic. You could do something that's not really heavy, like you could bag um, groceries at the grocery store. They hire people to do that, or take orders at Taco Bell or McDonald's or something like that, one of the fast food places. Um, it may sound a little bit arrogant to say it, but I don't think I'll be flipping burgers or working at a steel mill or an RV place. It's really not for me, the manual labor aspect. I'm more of a hustler, a dreamer, and I think everything's going to work out just fine. I said in a pinch, I'll do whatever it takes, but uh, that's certainly not my preference. I worked at McDonald's when I was a kid, and the only thing I did after I worked for him for a while was take all the money out of the safes, go on to the next McDonald's and do it again. They used to call me the hamburglar. I hit so many McDonald's restaurants. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I know the things that Bill has done in the past, and I can definitely look past them because I know he's a different person now. He has studied his Bible, given his heart to the Lord, and he's not the same man he was. I want him to make the right choices. But we are very nervous that when he comes here, he's gonna be very disrespectful and not follow the rules. I can do my part and Mark can do his part, but Bill has choices to make too. And if he makes the wrong choices, it's not gonna be successful. Oh, it's beautiful. Have you ever lived in a house? Of course. Or always apartments? It's Brooklyn's like all apartments, isn't we it? We have one of the biggest houses in Brooklyn I grew up in. Oh, OK. <laughs>
I was just released from prison after serving 18 years. I feel like I'm dreaming. I feel optimistic about the future. I'm looking forward to uh, my freedom. For example, just being able to go to a bathroom with nobody else in there in peace. I'm just overjoyed about this. There's a lot to look forward to. I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Wow, it's really it's beautiful. As of today, I believe I'm 50-50 on wondering whether or not I made the right decision taking a ex-con that we've never met into our home. I've certainly been very supportive of Sharna's idea. I'm trying to be optimistic, and yet I feel it's likely that things may not work out. Welcome home. Hello. Hi. This hey, is very Mark. nice to meet you, Bill. There's hey, Bill. Good How to you? see you. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Hanging in a long drive. Yeah. Yeah. Thank for you sure. for the courtesy of uh, your, your hospitality. I appreciate it. Well, <laughs> you're welcome. It's very much overwhelming already. It's <laughs> going from a surreal, negative, loud, filthy environment to a beautiful, nice, peaceful, quiet home is a, a shock to the senses. Yeah. Is something that I haven't experienced in many, many years. You. Would you like to take a look around the house? Sure. So if you want to look behind you, we have the family room, which we've spent about three or four days repainting. Looks very, uh, very cozy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Meeting Mark for the first time, my first impression, he was just as polite and kind as can be, and welcome home, brother, and. You know, he just treated me like a long-lost family member. So, that was pretty good. This is my room that I'm staying in. Yeah, at the moment, we're staying in separate bedrooms. So you guys sleeping in different rooms because you're fighting or something, or? No, no. absolutely not fighting. <laughs> Doing okay. great. I'm just glad. trying to keep space when we're asleep, especially when we're on different shifts. Okay. I thought maybe it was part of their religion, you know, they couldn't sleep together until they, whatever. I, it's just really weird. <laughs> she exiled herself to the purple room. Bill did quickly notice that we were sleeping in different rooms. Bill is being just a little nosy and he could mind his own business. All right, one more room, and that's your room, Bill. I'll let you do the honors. Is this it? No, <laughs> that's a closet. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. How do you like it, Bill? How do you like it? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> You got some friends there in bed with you, so some My stuff. daughter used to sleep in this room. I feel like I'm being pranked, but uh, it's better than a prison cell. I don't care if it was pink in here right now. I'm sleep, going to sleep and enjoying the room. <laughs> Over the last three weeks, we've been remodeling pretty much everywhere except in my stepdaughter's old room. Maybe I kind of intentionally left the room the way I did to test him on how he was going to react. Over here, we do have your list of rules. <laughs> Bill's house Perhaps. rules. Look at that. OK. Bill, he kept adding more there. We kept worrying about you, so he kept adding to the list. OK. No profanity. Give 10% tithe to God's work. Lights out at 10 PM. Non-compliance results in penalties. I scarcely know how to respond. What the heck is going on here? I got a unicorn for a nightlight and then the poster size list of rules with a freaking rainbow on it. A little extreme. I hope they're subject to negotiation. Like I don't know about that, but... Awkward silence. I get it. I'm under their roof. I'm a Christian. I'm not as probably as strict as they are. But at the same time, I'm a New York guy. You know, forget about it. Everything's subject to negotiation. If something comes up, something happens, you know, I shouldn't be judged. I think we should put that in the closet where, like, all my guests that come over don't have to see that and embarrass me. <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that. Bill might think these rules are funny, but 
I really don't know why he would have a problem with following any of them because this is our house and the rules need to be followed. We'll talk with you in the morning, okay? Good night. Good night. It's quite a comforting uh, child, this maybe feminine scene <laughs> for a guy coming out of prison. But uh, I'm not allowed to have anybody in the room, so who's gonna know? <laughs> what the hell did I get myself into here? After 18 years, I am finally free. They're just out of prison. I'm about to take an inmate in to live with me. You have your list of rules. What the hell did I get myself into here?